Hi there, welcome to the Upcycled Design Lab. If you're new here, my name's Cindy and I craft using recycled and repurposed materials to give you ideas on ways to make and create more economically and ecologically. And over the years, I've made a lot of different craft projects using tin cans. Uh, specifically, I've made some projects using just the top of the can or the lid of the can. And whenever I've done this, I've mentioned that I use a safety or side cut can opener, but I inevitably still get asked the question, what about the sharp edges of your project? So that's led me to believe that even though these can openers have been around for a long time, a lot of people haven't adopted them, don't really know what the difference is. And so I thought I would take today just to quickly talk about the difference between a regular can opener and safety or side cut can openers and a couple of different designs and also why you might want to upgrade to a side cut can opener. So of course everyone's pretty familiar with a regular can opener. You've got your two handles that you clamp down onto the can. There's a wheel that turns the can and a wheel that cuts the lid to remove the top of the can. These are also super easy to find. I'd recently bought a new side cut can opener and there was only one version available, but there were several different regular type can openers. So that leads me to believe that people are still just kind of, if they need a can opener, they're just running out and getting something that they're familiar with. They're also very reasonably priced. I, you can find them for less than a dollar and up to $14. Another thing about the regular can opener is that it's very easy to see when you've made it all the way around the can. You can see where you started and where you need to stop. I think there might be some additional styles to the two safety can openers that I have, but one of the common denominators of a safety or side cut can opener is that it only has one handle and you'll still have the knob to turn. There's usually a similar wheel to turn the can and then the blade wheel is facing perpendicular to the wheel that turns the can. So it can be a little bit confusing to use these when you're first getting started, especially if you're expecting to have two handles to kind of clamp onto the can. You can find the safety cut can openers in a variety of price ranges. They are sort of at the high end of a regular can opener and some of them can even be a little bit more expensive than that. This version, I don't know which one came out first, but this is the version that I have seen most available at stores and this is the one that I learned to use the safety can opener on. It's a little simpler design than my second one, and it's also a little bit less expensive. This was $10 at the grocery store just recently. I think this version is about $24, and they're harder to find. You might have to buy them online, but I've also seen them for 50% off, so they are more reasonable, but then you still have to pay for shipping. The biggest difference, of course, between these two types of can openers is the way that they cut the can. So as the name would suggest, the safety or side cut can opener cuts along the side edge of the can and it leaves a little bit of a lip on the lid and then you don't have the rippled sharp edges that you do with a traditional can opener. The other benefit that a lot of people tout about this type of can opener is that because there's a lip left on the lid, the lid can't fall into the can and then the outside of the can won't come in contact with your food. A couple more observations about the safety can openers that I've made just having used them over the years is that this style or version does not seem as sturdy as this one, which makes sense because this one is a little bit more expensive, but uh, I've also worn out the can opener faster. I don't know what happens with these, but somehow the turning wheel just stops turning and so that it, even though you've got it locked on the can, it, the can won't turn and the wheel won't cut. So they do seem to wear out faster just in my observation. This one seems like it's going to last a little bit longer and it's a little bit easier to use actually, so I'll show you that in a minute. So I think one of the reasons that the safety can opener hasn't been universally adopted is that this original version just works pretty well. And most of us are used to being careful with the edges of the can lid, and we're not too concerned about the can lid tipping into the can. 
But what really sold me on getting a safety can opener was using it as a crafting tool because of this lip that's left on the can. So let me open a few cans, show you how to use the can openers, and then I'll show you some of the projects that I've made using the safety can openers. So first I'm just going to use the regular can opener to open a can so that we can compare the two. So that works pretty simply. If you've used a regular can opener at all, you know sometimes your can gets has that little last bit that's stuck to the edge of the can and it can leave a little bit of a sharp edge inside the can and then obviously you've got just a raw edge of metal on your lid. Next up I'm going to use my what I'm considering the original version of the side cut can opener and this can opener also sets on the can similar to the original can openers and you want to set the can opener so that the this metal bar kind of rests on the can lid. So you're going to tilt the can opener just slightly and turn the wheel. And this is where the tricky part is because you have to wait until you're feeling it sort of grip the can. And it's hard to explain but but you'll notice it. I've got it locked on there now. So once that happens you can go ahead and turn the handle then just the way you would with a regular can opener. And you'll notice that it's not doing anything to the top. You didn't hear that pop when you release the pressure like you do when you clamp the regular can opener onto the can. And you can't really see as easily where you're cutting. You will notice, I'm just about to the end, and you're not gonna be able to see this in the video probably, but you'll notice a difference in the tension as you're turning the wheel so you'll know when you get all the way around. You'll feel, the, you'll feel a little skip. And then to remove the can opener, you just tip, turn the wheel the opposite direction. So you can see that it doesn't even really look like the can is open. If you look closely, you can see a little bit of a cut here. And if you grab the top, you could pull the whole lid off. And you'll just notice how, difference that, how different that looks to the way a lid looks when it comes off with a regular can opener. This next side cut can opener has a couple of other features that this one doesn't. And one of the things that's different about it is that you can see the gripping wheel here and the cutting wheel are not perpendicular. They're lined up similar to how they would be on a regular can opener. So true confessions, when I got this one, I tried to put it on like this and I just like, what in the world? It doesn't work. But the reason is that it sits on the can like this. So you want to have the lip of the can inside the turning wheel and the cutting wheel. And so it's much easier to set on the can and know that you have it in the right place. The other thing that this one does is as you turn the wheel, you can see that this gripping wheel is locking onto the can. So you have plenty of space to get the can opener set into the right position, and then you can feel the can lock on as you tighten the wheel. So then once you have it on there, you're going to turn it just the same way we did the last one. I think it's a little bit easier because you can kind of turn with both hands. And again, you're going to feel a little skip when you get all the way around. And to unlock it, you turn the wheel opposite, from the opposite direction that you're turning. And as I mentioned, this can opener has a couple of additional features. There's a little push button over here, and it triggers these two little metal grippers. And they're meant to just help you pull the can lid off. I don't usually use them. But if you don't want to touch the lid, you can use these, this little gripper to pull the lid off. The last feature that this one has is a little hook here. And that's made for getting under the rings. If you have a pull tab on your can, you can put that through the ring and pull your lid off. So here's just a look at the two different lids side by side. You can see that there's 
a kind of a sharp pointed burr on this one and like I said the raw metal edge and on this lid you just have a nice smooth curve and even the top of the can is also very smooth so just as a final thought if I were only using a can opener for opening my cans to cook a meal I probably never would have left the regular can opener but as I mentioned I saw a lot of potential with this version of a lid and so I'm going to show you some of the projects that I've made. I've already talked about the safety portion of the can and the lip that you get on the top of the lid but another fun thing to me as a crafter is that you can put the lid back on the can which opens up a lot of possibilities for making little canisters and other craft projects. So for this project, I used a small can for the base of my tree trunk and then wrapped it in some twine. But the important part about being able to put the lid back on the can is that I was able to fill the can with some weight so that this tree wouldn't topple over and then glue the lid back on so that I could attach everything together. I did a similar thing here with my little bobblehead snowman. This is a small can also has some weight added to it so that his head will bobble and then the top is glued back on and I used a larger can lid for the brim of his hat. Another project I made utilizing the top of some cans were to make some fun little coasters. These I added some washers to and made little cork feet but I just think the lip of the can makes a nice sort of fun finished shape for coasters. This project was made using the lids from several different can sizes and the lip of the can was a great little place to hang the decorations off of. This last project I call my tin can nesting dolls because they all sort of fit inside of each other. And they make a cute little Christmas decoration. So if you have had questions about safety can openers, I hope you found this information helpful. If you're interested in any of the projects that I've made using a safety can opener, I'll put links to all these projects in the description box. Or if you're interested in some different tin can craft projects, click or tap your screen now. If you enjoyed today's content, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button and check the bell icon so you can select your notification preferences. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you back here soon in the lab for my next experiment.